Well, good day, guys. Bit of excitement today. Uh, we've alluded to in a previous videos that there's something coming. Probably shouldn't give it away just at the start of the video. Otherwise, you won't watch the rest of the video. If you stay tuned for a little bit, we should be able to do some explaining of what's going on. So we're going to get the dump truck. This road, she's a bit, bit wild, a couple of wet patches, and we're just going to take the um, pressure off the truck and, and tow it through with that, I think, to um, make sure we get it as far as we can. If we do get stuck, we can always just unload it and go from there. Hey guys, well, as you would have seen in the drone footage, we made it so far. Um, but yeah, it's just obviously we, did, we we knew it was wet, but we always knew that we could um, just whip the dozer off if we ever got stuck. So that's what's happening now. Gonna pull it off that way. The truck can keep going forward. There's a lot of wheels under here. There's they got four on each side here, four there on each row. Well folks, Peter back again. We've just taken delivery of Tiny 3, I guess. So we only got a certain distance and the truck couldn't go any further because of recent rain. So anyway, we've had to unload it here. I think we've got another four Ks to go and we'll just see if we can walk it. Um, I don't think we'll have any trouble getting bogged with it. Anyway, five or six k's an hour, should be about an hour's trip, I hope. Anyway, we'll see what happens. He sounds nice.
Right, well, we're going to leave this dozer just here on the side of the, the track here, um, and we're going to shuffle some vehicles and then come, but that'll come back and pick that up and take it the rest of the way. Um, now what we're probably going to do is, the old man's floating around here somewhere um, and we'll go through probably right back to the start before we had any D11s and just have a bit of a recap of how we ended up with them, what the end goal is um, and why there's a third one that's rocked up. So if you already know the story, there was a video early on um, roughly explaining about why we ended up with two D11s and I think that's what it's titled, why we have two D11 bulldozers. Um, you can just skip this little bit, but if not, um, hopefully it'll um, yeah, answer a few questions. So, found him. He's over here, Sticky Beacon. Oh, the tables are turned, eh? <laughs> I can uh, dive bomb people now. Yeah. Um, it's more so, fun that way. <laughs> so, we'll go back right to the start. Um, we were looking at a bulldozer because of the drought, basically, wasn't it? We had There was a drought. Um, it had gone on for a little while. We were trying to, one, keep busy, two, try and work out how to, um, I don't know, keep the business turning over. Um, and then going through all the options, whether D6s, D8s, D9s, D10s, eventually got to a D11. And then you've pretty well had your nose in that ever since and all the ins and outs. So what uh, what's your take on, yeah, well, on the general history? Right, oh, well, you're right, it was the drought. Um, we had more labour than... Um, equipment um, how do you add value when it's not raining um, we thought well let's maintain our banks and contours um, a d9 was uh, around about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars Australian to get a good one um, and then you know there was a d11 tiny one turned up and it had a three shank ripper and and a 6.3 meter blade um, it was going to work well in the earth earthworks uh, if you compared the D9 for 450 and the tiny one for around about 250 Australian, it was about 25% of the price per kilogram of steel. And so that was a bit of a head scratcher, that one, because you know you go to bed at night and wonder, you know, we must be the only silly ones that are thinking about this. And but every time we did the numbers, it seemed to you couldn't escape the efficiency part of it. And that's so we did that, dug the dam out a um, bit bigger than we needed, but keep everyone in a job rather than sack each other. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, and then then the the, the whole concept grew because we, it it broadened our um, experience and our uh, we could see the possibilities that we never saw before, and it's had a big impact on our business model now. Uh, well, I guess the biggest thing really was the time, as far as if you're comparing different sized dozers, and we touched yeah. on that a little bit in a previous video too, but. Um, First and foremost, we're farmers, so we're not. We don't want to be on a bulldozer 24/7. Um, so that's where it was became more and more attractive. The fact that you could get um, more done in less time. So that was where the time efficiency. And then the cherry on top was that you know it's actually more per cubic meter moved. It's more fuel efficient um, so far, and, and it's proven itself that labour-wise, service-wise, and all of that too, it's it's quite economical. Very economical. I, I really wanted for my boys to do one day's work and instead of working a whole week and that's what we would have done with the smaller days do one day's work with this go do something else for the rest of the week and that was because it's a huge gain and then after the drought we got flooded and ended up many many hours stuck to these things so 22 uh, was advertised as running spare parts it was making metal in the engine and we felt that we needed some uh, some ch spare parts availability in case Tiny One gave trouble, because we were aware that the costs of parts can be quite expensive. So we bought that one very, very cheaply and found a broken engine 
scavenger pump. Um, we it had broken away from the underneath of the, of the block, and was that's where the metal was coming from. We fixed that up, put a new one in, spent about twenty thousand dollars Australian worth on bogey pins and other things to get it up and running, and that has now done near, pretty close to two thousand hours since that point. So um, tiny one's done getting close to four thousand hours. Mm. So we've done, they're probably averaging around about a thousand, that was four years ago we got tiny one, tiny two we got three years ago. And but you wouldn't recommend someone going to buy a D11 that's making metal in the engine for no. really cheap to think they're gonna, <laughs> that was just, that was a bonus, that, was a bonus. that wasn't that wasn't intended, the, the intention I guess from the start was never to have two no. running no. ones, um, but, so we sort of got into that and then when, when it was realised that tiny two was a very um, seemed to be a very solid machine then it, it, it grew from there so we were able to get we, we were kept an eye out for spare parts to keep both going um, and and again the bonus of being able to get jobs done quicker with two going and because of the floods that came after the drought um, very muddy and very easy to get stuck so having the two working together as as, pr as you would have seen in um, many other videos that was a as, big as, deal as that was proven a big to, deal. proven to work very very well um, just being able to pull each other out or give give just a little nudge to uh, sometimes you actually just get hung up because it's soft dirt you don't actually get bogged as such and just need a little nudge um, so yeah that's where it's really really helped having the two um, but from there how, how did this one come on the radar um, a couple of years ago a good friend of mine we'd been looking around scouting around um, conspiring with each other to do all sorts of things with dozers and he came across this one, but it was out of his reach, and um, the price, it was very good. It came, um, the history of it is, it was done up um, back in 2011, 2012. Um, all the majors were, were rebuilt. So it was all done at once, all pretty well. Once. The, yep. the engine, transmission, yep. scabs, final drives, the um, bevel gear, uh, the only thing we don't, no, that wasn't. We're not sure of, but may have been done as the the motor on the on the radiator on the fan. And that's probably been the goal, knowing that the other dozers have got high higher hours. Like they're, you'd say they're in the last night in the ninety percent of their their service life. Probably we, could, we couldn't find history on those. Yeah, really. um, history was a bit sketchy, so you couldn't really know exactly what you had. But um, it was evident that most components were towards the end of their life. Um, and we're still working fine, but um, just just wearing out. So to have two dozers that are nearly worn out is probably not great. Um, so that's where I guess it was always tried to keep a lookout for something that, with a little little less hours. And and this has actually got quite a few more hours, you know, service um, component wise left in it. So it uh, should be should service for many years. I think the mines work on maybe 12 to 15,000 hours for major components but I think in agriculture what we're doing you should get quite a bit more than that because it's soft work. It's, it's probably more undercarriage hmm. maintenance in this these conditions rather than um, drive drivetrain components isn't it? Yeah yeah so but yes this one's got the multi shank ripper already so you might remember um, I don't know how long ago that would be now. Six months? Yeah, maybe six months or might even be longer, but we bought a multi-shank ripper to put on Tiny 2 because it only had the single shank. Um, and we haven't, hadn't got around to putting it on yet. We've just been um, flat out with, with all sorts of other stuff. So because what's going to happen basically is Tiny 2 is going to be sold on. Um, and to that friend, to, to, to that, that friend to, yeah, mine. to that to that friend I'd mentioned earlier, and we don't need to worry about putting the multi shank ripper on because this one's already got it on. So that's one less job for us. But it is a little bit different. The other two are quite similar. They got the um, the full mine spec type stuff. So there's um, you know you got your balcony type. I don't know what you call them. The the landing, the walk around, <laughs> the walk, walk around patio up there. This one doesn't. Um, doesn't have any of the guardrails, handrails, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a solid, solid machine, and actually looks quite, quite naked without the rops over the top, doesn't it? She looks a bit, yeah. looks a bit small. Dad obviously drove it through a bit of mud getting here. 
um, but the other thing is different is the blade now this is just a semi u blade the other ones have both got um, u blades so how wide is this five five and a half five point eight five yeah um, so it is a bit narrower the other ones are six and a half so what well, yeah it's it's that little bit narrower um, we had to take these cutting edges off just so it, we could get it down the highway so they'll go back on as soon as we can but this blade will probably go with tiny two is that the case that'll be swapped over. it'll be swapped over with tiny two um, got the GPS yeah we've, tower on it we've got the tiny two has the blade on it that's got the GPS attachment and also the hungry board just spent all that time putting that on there Will we call it tiny three? Well, I don't know. That's the uh, maybe maybe sh shoot us in the comments what we should call it. Should we call it tiny two number two, or well, should we call it tiny three? Or well, when Andrew finishes with the other one, he said he, we might he might let us have it back. So mm. maybe we should keep it keep it in mind. Don't know. It might get confusing. Mm. I think tiny three. I think we'd be better. Then we'll never tiny three. Oh, tiny two will always be tiny two. Let us know if that's a bad idea. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think by the sounds of things, it's going to be a pretty good solid machine. Um, little gives you a little bit more confidence knowing that there's only what 1500 hours on most of the parts rather than maybe 8,000, maybe 10,000, maybe 15,000. But there's no guarantees, is there? And if you've got some D11s, there's times where you're just going to grit your teeth. <laughs> Hope for the best. what it is folks but every time you get out of the cabin on one of these things you just feel a little bit more of a man the thing is the immediate future of this is probably not going to be straight into the paddock um, we do have quite a bit of other work to do still so because tiny two is all set up with the blade we want it's all got the gps and everything in it um, yeah up until we virtually can't keep going when the crops are all up and there's not much as much work to be done this will probably just sit here might just be a, something to play with but um yeah then eventually we'll swap over tiny two with the gps and blade and the blade and tracks and different things are happening so might not see this um working too hard immediately so anyway guys that is i think i, no, I think we went past being a brief a brief explanation that was fairly we went fairly deep but that was fairly long-winded sorry about that <laughs> um, but i'm sure we did leave something out but over the over, hit us up in the comments about any questions I, again i do try to answer them sometimes there's quite a few that come through so i can't answer all of them but um generally when i see a question that is um genuine and and just curious wanting to know something i do try to answer them so anyway guys that is the brief history and plans for that dozer um, but as always just make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video uh, subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you in the next one